Hello, good morning, and hello, good morning, and welcome to today's products and focus. Most global equity markets are actually just ever so slightly off their um, Friday highs there. Even though we did have some very disappointing um, sentiment data come out of the U.S., another big miss across there, but still not dampening much spirits over there on the U.S. there in particular. Um, pretty much just stopped dead in its tracks at an historic all-time ever high, 18,284. We do have a slight retracement this morning, but nothing too uh, too, too strong. And um, more news out, out of China that the property market over there has ha has fallen for its sixth consecutive month. Uh, and, you know, there's more calls for more stimulus and um, government support there. But uh, that in itself is in the in the spirits of most, uh, most global indices. Uh, the US there is another prime example of this, trading all-time highs uh, or near all-time highs, even though a lot of the macro and the data coming out has been middling and mixed at best. So a lot of people questioning if it's still possible for US earnings to be as strong to justify these valuations. So uh, we won't have to wait too long to find out. So looking at the UK 100, the kind of candlestick formations that you have here at the top here are indicative of um, a lot of pressure, a lot of weight there. Again, your historic highs. Uh, dodgy formation there on Friday. We're trading in between two moving averages just now, uh, and we're flattening out close to 69.64. The RSI and the slow stochastic are both quite neutral, and it's only the MACD that's slowly beginning to penetrate that zero uh, line, but it's not yet completely crossed through it just now, but we've been so volatile the last couple of sessions. You can see the tips of these two candles right here comes with a 200-point range, so um, there, there is a lot of volatility still to be had right here, but certainly pressure looks like it is beginning to multiply on that market. So looking at Japan 25, um, dollar yen pushing back up towards 120, still at 119 as ever, um, but this is helping to uh, Japan 25 uh, build up some momentum for it to be able to potentially tackle 20,087. We've got a bullish crossover on the MACD. The other technical indicators are neutral, but as a MACD, you should be looking at if this uptrend is still in play, which looks like it, that it is. Again, potential head and shoulders formation developing right here. If we suddenly get a, a twist down and a break of this upwards trend line, that could be seen as, uh, as quite a strong technical breakout. But obviously, things are moving on the upside just now, trading by both moving averages, the 21 and 55 period. So looking at dollar yen, again, not really that exciting. 119 is a pivot point right here. 121.87 is a longer term potential resistance. The other technical indicators are almost completely useless at this stage because it hasn't crossed any of these uh, overbought or oversold indicators for quite some time. Might actually be quite good to trade if you're looking at this in a slightly shorter time frame. If we just have a look at it, say on the four hourly, uh, it does follow quite an interesting wave formation. Though we'd be in the middle of a potential wave just now, I guess if you were to get your drawing tool out, and look at the tips of these candles in a kind of a descending formation. Um, we are a good bit away from any potential opportunity there right now, but uh, dollar, that's probably the only thing in dollar yen that looks remotely interesting is trying to play those waves. So moving on to West Texas crude. So more advances made by ISIS in Anbar province in Iraq. Uh, continues uh, unrest in Yemen and uh, Libya ports are still under siege by our militias. Uh, and that's helping to provide a little bit of short-term support for West Texas crude. Um, still trading above 59.50, eyeing up $64 the next potential resistance. We had a hammer formation yesterday on um, Friday after a sell-off. That's usually seen as quite a positive technical signal. Um, we've had a little bit of follow-through this morning. We might have had a short-term spike up first thing this morning in UK 10. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how things pan out. Obviously, we've got crude oil inventories on Wednesday. Um, and the dollar is making some headway, actually. The sterling's going to reverse course. We'll come back to that in a second. So keep your eye on the dollar when looking at commodities. So <clears throat> we've talked about gold quite a lot. Each bit of economic data that comes out of the US that is um, is pretty rubbish, to be honest, is net positive for gold. Weakens the dollar, um, really scales back the prospect of an interest rate hike in the US um, this year. I think you know, almost everybody now is saying 2016 at the earliest, if it's even then, to be completely honest. Uh, and a big spike up, we're continuing to see it right here. Gold's been in the doldrum for quite some time. We are in the middle two ranges right now, but it looks to be that 12.42 is the next potential resistance. Any reversal and 12.18 remains a potential support. So let's finish up the euro dollar and GBP USD. Euro dollar really beginning to build up some momentum itself as well. Um, one spot 16.42 is the next potential uh, resistance. It really looks like we've broken out of this uh, downwards trend line we've been in for 
uh, well, it's almost been about a year, maybe about nine, ten months. Um, bullish cross on the moving on the moving averages. Obviously, technical indicators massively overbought already. Um, it really depends now because the U.S. data has been coming in so mixed. Uh, each each piece that comes in that misses expectations, uh, I think the Americans could actually really do with the do with the dollar beginning to weaken ever so slightly. So I wouldn't be surprised if a huge amount of economic data ends up being skewed to be uh, middling to to negative for uh, for the next couple of months. Uh, bearing in mind, obviously, the economy is, is looking to be slowing down. The valuations of the of, of the equity market seem to be painting a completely different story to the to the to reality of the facts that are coming out from the Fed uh, and all the other uh, institutions in the U.S. that dictate a lot of this um, macroeconomic data results. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see the euro tick up that little bit higher, depending on how those macro data announcements continue to trickle out. So looking at GBP USD, I think the sell-off that we've seen here is just more indicative of profit taking after an unbelievable push to the upside uh, one spot 57.43 was potential support we're on the wrong side of that just now so even if we do sell a bit more and we could do with a little bit of pressure coming at this fx pair one spot 56 is the next potential support level so economic data wise uh, nothing today tomorrow you've got a huge amount of uh, uk data to be trading cable that'd be quite an interesting one to look at cpi ppi eurozone cpi be good for your dollar as well uh, ZW business report good for your dollar make sure you've got your alarms your alerts set for that as well that's a very important one um, and if we go into Wednesday you've got again German PPI and you've got the NPC Bank of England minutes which should be quite interesting I'll be you know they're obviously not going to be raising rates anytime soon uh, and then you've got crude oil inventories so Wednesday promises to be an interesting day so as ever uh, Tuesday and Wednesday uh, keep your eye on the chart forum for more setups from our global analyst team. Make insights part of your layout because there's obviously lots of cool stuff that comes from our global teams as well. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happens next.